Kaldin, there has been a lot of talk about expansionism. In fact, as uh, Sil Ramaphosa himself put forward that that BRICS is standing at a cusp of expansionism. I want to ask you, when can we hear some confirmation on the matter and what is the justification of these members who are all up for expansionism, it seems? Well, firstly, I think we should begin by the very important statement that was made by India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi, who actually, for the first time, himself confirming that India is for the expansion of BRICS. You know, he, uh, this is the first, his, uh, we've heard this previously before by some of the officials, but the Prime Minister himself, from his mouth, is the first time that we hear. So this expansion of BRICS, which uh, is very important, uh, even before the summit, uh, this is one of the topics that has been time and again discussed not just by BRICS leaders but also Western countries if you look at it many of them the analysts and experts have been talking about whether or not it will be feasible for the current five uh, leaders the BRICS to bring in BRICS plus countries uh, countries but we've heard from the leaders from the day one of the summit stating that for the BRICS to be more powerful for the BRICS to be more stronger for the BRICS to take ahead the main agenda of uh, you know achieving um, uh, development for the uh, development for the global south countries more parties more countries need to come together therefore this uh, you heard from the leaders even last night during the retreat this was one of the biggest uh, uh, discussion that was held we are told so the BRICS expansion everybody is waiting for the answer on whether or not that will happen during this summit well South Africa says they would love to do the announcement during this summit as they are the chair chair uh, as they take the chairship of the summit, but we can only wait and see what will happen towards the end of the summit, that is tomorrow. All right, Kaldin, uh, we are also being joined by Sidhan Sibyl, uh, our principal diplomatic correspondent, of course. Uh, Sidhan, I want to quickly uh, quote Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi from his speeches. He said that this summit will provide a useful opportunity for BRICS to identify future areas of cooperation and also review institutional development. But I want to ask you, this cooperation is looking dubious from where we are standing. This grouping has had members with conflicting interests. So there has been a lot of talk on expansionism that also Carl Dain has uh, pointed out. When can, we hear, when can we hear some confirmation on the expansionism from New Delhi, which also Carl Dain rightly pointed out that Mr. Narendra Modi for the first time has given a green light towards an expansionism. How so? How is New Delhi taking that, Sadant? And uh, if you could just throw some light on that. Well, on expansion, India was uh, very clear that there needs to be expansion, but what needs is consensus and guidelines that not any country can just come and say that I want to become a member. There needs to be a certain criteria and perhaps in few hours or maybe perhaps one or two hours, we will see the formal announcement with the joint statement. Secondly, as you pointed out, that this group looks like a group of contradictory country, India and China together, yeah. and how things work on uh, similar things. Will uh, the BRICS go south way? No, it's not going south way for a simple reason that India and China are two very large and responsible, to use the phrase, countries, and they have been working in the past as well in many issues. First and foremost, climate change is one issue where there are convergences. I'll give you an example as to how SCOM, which is similar in dynamics in terms of China and India present, has been working under the Indian presidency, which China attended most of the meetings, almost all meetings. Uh, for example, India focused on low-hanging fruits to use the uh, to use an example of culture. How India focused on common, uh, commonality of shared culture and Buddhism, and you must have heard how SCO uh, worked on that. And when it comes to these issues, when it comes to the idea of education, this is something that nobody, not India, not China, is going to uh, oppose. Uh, both want education for their people. You know, they are people poor in China uh, as well in India, and they can uh, essentially the government to government can work on that, on technology, on traditional medicine, and on big cats as well. These are low-hanging um, fruits, and both countries, I don't see an opposition. For example, the inclusion of African Union in India's G20 presidency. Now, uh, China will never oppose that for simple reason that China also has similar policies for Africa as India has. So there are always ways to work together, in a, even in a diverse set of grouping. 
Uh, right, Sadan. Now, during Prime Minister Modi's statement, he also said cooperation on quote-unquote big cats under international big cat alliance. Could you please read between the lines? What is the Indian Prime Minister hinting towards? Well, um, uh, there is an alliance uh, which obviously mentioned about the big cats, and basically this means lions, tigers, and how there should be con uh, conservation uh, on uh, these issues. And India has been. Uh, focused on that uh, in many ways. For example, India has for the first time this year and uh, in fact it started since many years uh, uh, worked together for inclusion or for the reintroduction of cheetahs and as uh, the South African president talked about it. So these are countries who have number of big cats which for example is tiger, lion, leopard, snow leopard, cheetah, jaguar. Uh, so they can work together in preservation of this of these animals uh, and this is a low hanging fruit yet again in which uh, I don't think so any opposition will come whether it's from uh, China or any other country. Right, speaking of China, President Xi Jinping focused on the need to move beyond the Cold War mentality. Is this what you were hinting at when you said that India and China are big develop, uh, you know, uh, economies who can work out their differences when it comes to a global spectrum like uh, BRICS? Well, I think this message is more for outsiders than insiders in terms of the uh, BRICS grouping because this is a phrase, usual phrase used by Chinese uh, for the West and this is a clear message by the Chinese for the West in terms of cold mob mentality. That means uh, basically two leading groups in the world that basically ask the rest of the world to take uh, positions and uh, the Indian diplomacy is not like that. India works with all countries, barring of course maybe Pakistan to uh, to point out, but essentially this is a message that West, it's time that it should not uh, uh, indulge in actions which are seen as interference. And uh, there were uh, not similar phrases, but as the Russian president pointed out that he said that how there should be you know, the the invasion by the West is something that he responded to. So you know, the West, uh, the Chinese and the Russians have their own world view, and of course they were you, they were talking about it through the BRICS platform. It's a platform where, of course, most of the countries share similar thought process regarding a uh, worldview, which includes uh, their interest in terms of um, helping domestic policies and putting people out of poverty. Right. Now, Sidan, the Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi also stressed the need to deepen cooperation, especially in the area of space advancement. If you could just decode that for our viewers, what is he hinting towards? It couldn't have come on a very good day when just few hours from now, perhaps just two hours from now, we will see Chandrayaan landing on the moon and this is something everyone is hoping for and we have seen prayers and messages. The Indonesian ambassador spoke to us shortly um, uh, saying that her wishes are there and of course the uh, South uh, African president also talked about that we share your joy. So uh, the idea is that how India today is a leading power when it comes to space technologies and India has proven that in the past, in practical measures, sending out satellites of countries who don't have uh, the resources. And India has uh, gone in front, gave them resources, uh, launched their satellites. So a cooperation for, uh, for Brazil, a cooperation for South Africa, who might not be as leading as India. Of course, India has a strong relationship in terms of space cooperation with Russia. But all in all, this is something that India is selling to the world, that is that it has the space technology and it's willing to collaborate on that with the countries, with the BRICS members.